Hello YouTube and welcome to our 35th Unity 3D tutorial. So if you've already seen this one before, don't worry about it. Check my vlog out and it'll explain the situation. And for any newcomers, if any of this looks completely different to what you've got, just carry on with the code what we're going to perform in this tutorial and then carry on with the tutorials or visit my vlog to see why. So last tutorial I've recreated this, hopefully it works, but we collect the items and it stocks up and adds it to our inventory which works great for a temporary inventory however um, well it adds it on to the end we need to add it to it and the tutorial is going to be split into two parts the second part we're going to make it add it to it so it's like 20 stone 1 wood etc so the first part we're going to highlight, be able to click on it and it will tell us what it is so it should be really helpful so it's like it gives a name some stats and stuff like that so we can do that but first we're only going to do the name and then in the future tours we're going to do it so if you open up your inventory GUI we first need to look at how best way to turn our um, texture for our grid so just an image we need to look at the best way to turn it to two strings in an image a string for the name of it so that will be the value to us and um, the tooltip of it and the image. So if you've if you're experienced in Unity, you will know what we're about to use. But if not, all you need to type is change the grid um, variable. You can either hide it and duplicate it, or just change it. GUI dot GUI content. So just GUI content, four capitals, no capitals. So when you do that and you go back to your inspector, you'll see that you'll get an error, which is common. So if you just go back to your add items, um, we'll just cut this out for now just so I can show you what we're talking about. So when it loads, there we go. So we'll let the grids re reload itself. As you see we have none, but if we just put one in just to look at it, you'll see that we now get um, a folder for each one and three things, text, image and tooltip. So we can access each of these by going grids. Um, square bracket and then we put what number we want so we'll say zero bracket dot and then we can either access text image or tooltip just like lowercase word so lowercase text lowercase image so tooltip and we can change it and so we can have as many of these and it saves having nearly 90 elements just like do it it's not very good but yeah so our image will set to grid blank icon and we'll just do the, do the duplication trick so we have 40 there we go so they've all got things in so back to the inventory add items, we'll paste it back in. The reason that this is throwing an error is because if we go to our grids, so it's grid zero, grid zero, so it goes to zero and it's trying to edit the folder, nothing inside, so it can't set the image of a folder, it can't check if the image of a folder is a blank icon. So we need to tell it to go from there to the image point, which is like I said, dot image. Simple as that. So we copy that to everywhere it wants it, which I automatically know is that. And if we go back, now it won't do no more fits. So if we play it and press our I key and collect some stuff, it will look the exact same as normal. So there's no change whatsoever. You can see it's updating in the inspector. No changes whatsoever. Perfect. But the only reason we have to do that is because now, if we go back to inventory GUI, we can now access the tooltip option of this, which will be really helpful. So, if we scroll down to, well, actually up here, it, I've created a new variable here called tooltip size. So, we can change the size. We don't need to make it a position variable because um, we're going to make it follow the mouse, aren't we? so we don't need to do it. Unless you want it somewhere else then you will put position in but I'm going to make it follow the mouse. So I happen to know a good size is 140 by 40 obviously when we add more stats we'll make that bigger so yeah. So if we scroll down all the way down here and in the on GUI bit here what we can do is below the if statement in fact we'll make, put it in the if statement to save any hassle. So we'll type if and now we need to look at it if you go back to this array for our grids, it starts at zero, doesn't it? So if our grid value is minus one, it's going to throw an error. So we need to first check that if that is not minus one, it's like zero or higher, which is simply if it's equal or I always get them mixed up. Did it again? There we go. If it's 
more than or equal to zero. Simple enough. So we type our box in here. Blah blah. We'll type our GUI box what will follow our mouse. But what we also need to check is you can make it just show when it's blank. So if I told it's blank, it'll show when you click on it. But what we need to do is make it check if it's blank as well. So if we and and for so if it's that part of if statement and this part, we could type grids grid value. So say zero. We're on zero now. Dot tooltip. So we're accessing the tooltip function. Does not equal blank. So if it equals blank, it won't show. But if it doesn't, then it will show, which should work perfectly. So let's create our GUI box. We know how to create these. Um, and all we're going to do is set it to follow the mouse on the first X and Y. Um, set it to tooltip size and set it to show this tooltip. So we just paste this here for now and finish that. We can type here GUI.box. So we've got our box. Um, it needs to be rect. So we need our X, Y, width, height. That's right, yep. Yeah. And then we're done. So our X, we'll do our width first. The width will be our tooltip size here. Our um, width, sorry, I apologize. Dot X and height dot Y. So we've got that done. So now it'll show it. However, we need to set the X and Y. Now for some reason, you'll have to use two different parts to follow the mouse and I'm not 100% sure why so just type it and we'll see it works and if anyone else knows please comment and tell me because I really don't get the difference but for the X you need to type event.current.mouseposition.x so that will access an event what's currently happening so a current ha event and it will get the mouse position because it's moving so it's updating an event and then we're going to get the X position of it that one I can explain. The only difference is for the Y, you have to use screen minus screen dot height minus input dot mouse position dot Y, and then plus 15 to because else it'll be bang on in the line with the mouse. The tooltips are generally just a bit lower. So that's what the plus 15 is for, but I actually have no idea why you have to use input that mouse. But if you use event that current, it throws an error, which is weird. But yeah, so just type that, um, it'll be in the description in codes if you don't know. So if we keep it like that, it should um, follow the mouse and show that if the tooltip's not blank. So let's have a look. Obviously it won't work first because we've not got any way to set tooltips. So if we go to here and drag this out away, as you can see we can collect it and if we click it nothing shows so if we go to the stone and type in stone and go back to here we click it it'll show stone obviously we need to mess with the layers so it's above it even though I actually I don't know if it's above it or not it looks like it but it's, I don't know but yes yeah, so we've got stone and then we've got blank so we can easily set that up um, another tutorial but it should work perfect for now so now what we're going to do is go into the value. So every time we collect two stone, instead of having stone stone, we'll have stone two. So it'll be really easy if you know what I mean. If not, just well skip a bit to end and you'll see. Then you can come back if you like it. So in our inventory add item, we've basically got it saying if the item what we collect is a blank icon. If sorry, excuse me, when it's checking our inventory to look to where to add the item. If it equals a blank icon, it'll add it. Else, if it doesn't, if it equals a stone, then it'll carry on. But what we we'll need to check is if the one it's trying to add and the one what was coming to there are the same, then all it needs to do is add it onto it. So the text plus equals one. So it's really, really simple. So if we go here where this is, we'll duplicate this above it. Control D and Notepad plus plus. Change this one. We do want to keep this blank one. Because if it does equal a blank icon, it means it's not found it yet. Um, and what we will have to do in the future is here, we'll have to create a for loop so it checks everything before it's doing it. And I'll explain oh, in another tutorial why. But yeah, so if we basically got to say the same thing, but we don't really need it to say the same thing. What we need it to say is if the image what we're adding is the s same as the current image. So if we copy the new item and paste it in blank icon, Basically, let's say the image what it's checking currently is it the same as this? If yes, add it to it. That simple, really, really simple. 
So now we don't need to change it to the new item because it's already is the new item. So what we can do is instead of changing the image, we'll change the text and then we need to change it to the amount of what we have. So say we have one stone, it now, the text of it now needs to equal two stone, three stone. So if we go back to our player run tour, we've actually got this whereabouts, player's amount here. So if we look here, um, for oak wood it is zero. So we've currently got zero. So when we get one, it'll add it to it, which we've set, uh, I can't remember where we've set it, but we've set it in the collisions, that's it, and it'll increase that. So what we need to do is get this and show the one on the correct one. So say we've got wood, and it's to show wood's text instead of stone's text, which is easier than you think, but with the arrays and scripts we have to go through, it can look a bit confusing, but just stick with it and then you will get it. So first we need to go to our player inventory. So the new text is going to go to this player inventory, it's going to go to the player's amount array, dot player's amount array, and then in here, what array are we looking for? Well we wanted to look at what the new item added is. So the new item added is this static variable what we created to get the IDs. So if we copy this and go down to this array, we can type inventory dot add item, it's not dot add, underscore add. And I actually spell it right. Inventory add item. There we go. But um, so we've accessed this script and we're going to get the static variable. So we, if you can see, the text of it, of the grid, is now going to be into the player inventory script, into the array, so the script here, the array, and which one of these is it going to tick? Well, we're going to get the one, what says, the new item, what we've just collected, is this ID. So say that's zero, so it'll go to that script, that variable, this array, to that one. So zero, or one, or two, or three. So it'll collect the ID, which is done. So it's really good to have that ID one, which we created a couple of tutorials ago. However, if we were to just put a semicolon down, it would throw an error, because this is an integer, not text. So we need to create it to a string. If you watched any of my previous tutorials, you should hopefully know how to do this, um, because you're all clever. I know you're all clever. And we'll change this to dot to string on the end with two brackets. And now that I turn it into a string instead of text, it's a bit of a complex bit there, and you might get confused. But if you just sit down and just think about it slowly, it does sink in, and you will get it. It's really, really easy. So now what we need to do is when we click the blank icon, it adds the image to it, correct? But it now needs to update the tooltip and the text. Well, where have we got already the names of the items? Well, we've got our items ID, so oak wood, palm tree, we've already got it all there. So we can just rip some data from that, if you like. Um, so what else is there? We need to get um, the te te tooltip we've got, the text we've already done. So we can just copy this line here. And in the blank one, when it adds it, we'll just paste it under here. So dot text equals player inventory, blah, 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 blah. So should that add it correctly? By the looks of it, it, that's correct. So when it runs through, it'll add the image, which we know works already. Then it'll add some text to it, which is the value, so it's still zero. And when you collect the grid, and you'll see your inventory, you'll have a picture of the image, but then you'll have a small zero next to it or, or on top of it, and that'll tell you its value. We can, of course, play with this in the skin, but we're not going to do it now. So if we duplicate this line again, um, we don't want to edit the text now and want to add tooltip so we can add tooltips. So we do need to go to the player inv inventory but we don't need our um, player's amount no more. We just need our item ID. So paste that in. And we do need to go to this one to get our ID of it, what we've already got. But it doesn't need to be a string because it already is a string. So if you don't get your head around that, comment below and I, I will actually explain it to you in more detail, see if you can understand it because it is all the best. But um, we're just basically bouncing from one script to another, to an array, inside an array, back to another script, and we're just bouncing all over the place to get it, but it does work. So let's see if we've got any errors. 
we have an error. It doesn't understand player inventory because I've probably spelt it wrong. 24, which is there. Inventory, players inventory. So we've spelt that wrong. Player underscore, it's underscore, that's why. You was all probably sat there thinking that's going to throw an error, which you were correct. So well done, have a cookie. Let's try again. There we go. So, have we still got our grids working? Oh, no, do not close prefab. Down, there we go. So, we've got all blanks. Fair play, it's all good. So, we press I. Everything seems to be working so far. I'm not going to fire because that deafens us. So, what I'm going to do is collect one. One. So, you see, we have one stone. Click it. We have, okay, one iron bar. My apologies. What we need to do is make it so when you hover, though, you have to click it for it to show, which is a bit annoying. But as you can see, we have one iron bar, which we do. It is called iron bar, and it's three. So if we click on another one, boom, two, three, four, it works perfectly. Three, four, one, two, three. There we go. So as you can see, you can click different ones. It tells you where it is. But it's perfect. Yay. Um, some people have had some issues with the images not showing up. You need to, in here, make sure you've got this line here. And make sure, what you need to do is trace it. So with, it sets it, but if it's blank and you have got that line, what's new item showing? So in here, if I were to go to my inventory add, here, this new item should always show the texture what we've just collected. If yours doesn't, then you've got a problem. But, um, so let's have a look. So it's just, we've just collected an iron bar. So if we click another one, nothing's changed. But if we click stone, it will change to the one we've just collected. So you always got to make that sure that changes. If it doesn't, make sure in your collision script you've got it set up. So I hope this helps. Any problems, please comment below. If anyone can find out why the event thing works or doesn't work, please tell me. You will be foreverly thanked and um, see you later